Hey guys, it's Vic, and the more that I think about this, the more I feel like I have to talk about it. Challenges! Splatoon 1 gives challenges through the amiibos. You can play as a Kraken and have limited ink challenges at the use of the squid amiibo, or you can try to beat the game using only a roller or a sniper with the boy and girl inkling amiibos respectively. While Kraken doesn't exist in Splatoon 2, the other two amiibos' challenges live on in their own way, since we're able to challenge any level we want with any weapon we want in the storyline. Splatoon 2 hides its challenge levels in the Acto Expansion DLC, where we have time trials, weaponless movement challenges, tests of your accuracy, and girl power station. Completing these challenges makes you feel accomplished, and many of these challenges help with your mechanics in Splatoon. If you were Nintendo, making a brand new Splatoon game, I think you'd already be thinking about ways to make money after the game comes out, maybe via optional DLC? After all, Splatoon 2's DLC was a pretty big success. Too bad we didn't have anything after Octo Expansion. When Octo Expansion was first announced, they claimed it was the first DLC for Splatoon 2 which to some implied there was going to be follow-up. There wasn't. We'd hopefully know by now if there was. So, how could Splatoon 3 make challenge levels, likely via DLC, that would be different from the ones in Octo Expansion? As I mentioned before, we want to make sure that they're fun, they're challenging, duh, and they probably should help you in some way to get better at the game. Or at least a majority of them should. So, what about a weapon challenge? that made you experiment, like it or not. Imagine a stage where every time you passed through a terminal or checkpoint, you had to just, whoop, swap your weapon for another one. Could be random, could be predetermined. If there were multiple challenge options, maybe there could be three different combinations. Like one where you play common weapons, like blaster, roller, splattershot, junior. And then maybe you have other options later, like a splattershot pro, charger, 96 gal, heavy. A challenge like this would give players a bunch of experience in a short period of time. And who knows, maybe they'd like one of the weapons they tested? Maybe they'd go and buy it from Sheldon's shop and increase their knowledge in the game? What's that? Not gimmicky enough for you? It's okay. It's alright, I gotcha! So you know how in Splatoon's hero mode, you can upgrade your weapon over time to make it better and better, right? What if there was a set of levels? designed to do the opposite. <laughs> what if you started with a very powerful version of a weapon and it got worse over time? Like the range starts out super good and then it starts uh, not, not being so good and then really bad. And then for kicks, if you use the weapon too much, it just straight up breaks. You'd still have your sub weapon to like finish up the level assuming you don't lose when your weapon usage goes too high, but hey, I think that'd be hilarious. You'd have people who probably would try to not use their weapon basically the whole time to try and like save the good part of their weapon for like a part of the level they didn't like. It could be interesting to see people try to speedrun these without using their weapon because they'd probably be built to not have to use the weapon. And you know, the other way around could work too. What if your weapon starts bad and gets better with usage and then breaks when it's too overused? Some players might opt to overuse their weapons early so they can get through the hardest part of a level with their strongest option if that's the case. Why fight an Octarian? Or, you know, maybe a... maybe a Salmonid? A? A? With a weak splatter shot when you could absolutely decimate it with like a high velocity burst of splatter shot terror. You can't tell me you never want to see what a splatter shot pro or a clash blaster would look like going at high velocity instead of what it already does. It'd be gross. It'd be fun. I want to see it. Don't you want to see it? Speaking of painful ideas that I want to see, what about if your Octoling or Inkling could only shoot when their feet are off of the ground? That would mean that everything you do would also be affected by everyone's favorite part of the Splatoon franchise, shot RNG. Want to hit an opponent from a distance? Better hope that that shot doesn't deviate too much. Want to paint yourself a straight path with the dually squelchers? Eh, might want to take a couple of extra seconds to feel confident about that. You gotta make sure you start charging that charger shot before you jump. If your aim is shaky, it could also make it harder than ever to get rid of opponents. And, uh, admittedly this one might not be too great since jumping is harder when you have sticks on, but shh, don't worry, don't worry about it too much. This is also a gimmick that could be reused or have a lot of difficulties added to it, seeing as some weapons like the Splash-O-Matic would suffer a lot less than the 96 Gal, 
but it might also not work too well for some weapons like the arrow spray, where you're not gonna be too far away anyway to be shooting, so you might not want to have that weapon in there at all. I don't know. But enough about weapon gimmicks. Let's consider a normal gimmick, rehashed from the amiibo challenge that I mentioned before. What about just a squid-only mode? Assuming Kraken doesn't come back in this game, it's safe to say that as just a squid, you're not able to do too much to the environment. That wouldn't stop the game from finding ways of keeping things interesting in my opinion. Why not have a platform that only moves when you shimmy on top of it? Why not have obstacles that move, rotate, or shift position at random to make sure you're on top of your game? Just because you're a squid doesn't mean you can't take advantage of your mobility. Remember, Splatoon was built on top of this idea of having extra mobility as a squid. Maybe some of these rotating platforms only have ink on some of the sides, but not all their surfaces. So you're forced to keep moving without falling off. We've seen this a little bit in Octo Expansion, where they'd sometimes have platforms that randomly rotate, and then you'd fall pretty often, like I did. <laughs> Don't forget that as a squid, we do have a small amount of new ink that comes out whenever you pass over a surface. So maybe if you really needed to put down a little extra turf, you could just go back and forth and back and forth over a puddle <laughs> over and over again. Maybe that come in handy to put down a little more turf before making a leap of faith. It could also, in part, bring back that old mechanic of slowly swimming past opponents. That's so they don't see you because you're a squid and you can't actually shoot them, you know? Lastly, a challenge that probably would have been done better in Splatoon 2, but could still be fun in Splatoon 3. What if we could temporarily give dually dodging techniques to any weapon? Wouldn't it be fun to dually dodge with a Brella or a splatter shot, even if it look a little silly? The game could also force you to try and take advantage of your dodge rolling by also making the opponent's dodge roll. Maybe only once, so you could easily keep up with them. For a player that is hesitant to use the duallys, this could be a great way to get them used to the idea of dodge rolling while also letting them try it with a weapon they already know. In Splatoon 3, where duallys won't be the main focus, this could still work. They're really unique compared to any other weapon, and players who didn't own Splatoon 2 could be confused on how to operate duallys. We do possibly have a bunch of new movement techniques coming to Splatoon 3 anyway, like that little squid roll that we've seen in the demo trailer thing, so why not teach people how to dodge roll properly while we're at that? With how near and dear Octo Expansion is to so many people's hearts, I think it's just fun to think about challenge ideas. Do you have your own fun ideas for challenge levels in Splatoon 3? Let me know in the comments below! It could be fun to elaborate on your ideas if I agree with enough of them. Thank you for listening, and have a good one!